It's Tom Dixon and I'm here at the Science Museum in Milan, Museum of Technology, which is the backdrop for a show that we call Most, which is really for people that are escaping trade fairs, if you like. So we put together and slightly curate a show. We rent half of the museum and it's a great backdrop because it's full of materials and innovations from a thousand years back to the future. Last year we were talking about manufacturing processes and how those have become digitalised and we used a, a big punch press with a German company called Trump to make something here in the museum. The net result of those are some big lamps that we're now going to be making in New York for a client and the one that we're showing here was made in London. And so we're kind of deconstructing the manufacturing um, process. I think for a long time people just thought, well, all goods were going to be produced a long way away in low, la low, um, low cost labour countries and shipped in huge quantities to the rich West. But that whole um, equation has completely changed. No longer is it so much the rich West anyway, and no longer uh, uh, are we wanting to buy um, such big and cheap goods in the same way. So, you know, it's been talked about for a long time, but now it's becoming real. And you see it everywhere in the museum, people just taking matters into their own hands. The product world has been quite slow to be part of the digital revolution, but obviously people are now getting more and more able to bypass the normal structures for producing and selling their work. So what you'll see <coughs> around the museum, and in fact all the way around Milan right now, is people just getting on and, and producing their own things, which I think, you know, a couple of years back people would have been waiting for a big producer to spot their prototypes and put them into production. People have given up hope of that happening, but of course with the um, the, the, the new technologies, you're able to produce the stuff yourself digitally, um, do the logistics through various infrastructures like eBay or what have you, and then get direct to global consumer. There's uh, Fab.com, who are sort of giant internet um, structure for retailing direct to consumers um, fresh ideas from young designers. So people are being approached by them to sell their things online to an audience of something like 13 million internationally. Um, which means that a young, untested designer can suddenly have this vast marketplace. And then you see other people that are working on all kinds of um, means of producing things themselves, either domestically in a, in a home oven or using some of the new rapid manufacturing techniques. And, and that's something which is still a very big trend right now. And I think the cooperative model is also a, a very interesting one where you'll see more and more small producing houses coming together. And they're coming from all over the world now. So it used to be a very Europe-centric thing, the design world. And we're seeing a kind of more unified globe and designers from all over the world are, are, are making all over the world and selling all over the world, which I think is, is, is a significant move from what Milan used to be, which was really in the majority Italian production companies possibly using a few international designers for marketing purposes, but selling to the whole world. So it's completely changed like that.